Okay, AMC 8 holds many different types of math competitions for kids of different grades, such as AMC 8, AMC 10, AMC 12, and other higher competitions. Um, and there are many different topics covered in AMC exams. Throughout this course, we hope you can learn something about that helps you on competitive math exams and help you, helps you appreciate math more. So today we will be learning, um, sorry, today we will be learning LCM and prime factorization. Um, so prime factorization. So what are factors? Um, so factors are also known as divisors and they divide a number. So for example, five is a divisor of 10 because five divides 10 into two, which is a whole number. However, six is not a divisor of nine because six divides nine into, into 1.5, which is not a whole number. So we're gonna ask you a few problems about factors and um, ask any questions you might have. Um, is 12 a factor of 1, 2, 4, 0, 8? Um, so type your answers in the chat. Um, and Okay, so there are a couple of answers. And yes, you guys are correct. So 12 is a factor of 1, 2, 4, 0, 8. Why? It's because 1, 2, 4, 0, 8 is divisible by 12. So it, um, 12, when, 1, 2, 4, 0, 8, when divided by 12 is 104, which is a whole number, meaning that 1, 2, 4, 0, 8 is a factor or divisor of 12. Is 7 a factor of 365? Now type your answers in the chat. Okay, yeah, um, you guys are getting the correct answer. So the answer is no. Um, because when you divide 365 by 7, you get um, 52 and 1 seventh, or 52 remainder 1. And 52 and 1 seventh is not a whole number. So that means that 7 is not a factor of 365. Michelle. So now we're going to be relearning about prime numbers. Um, so prime number is a, fa uh, is a number that doesn't have any factors besides for 1 and itself. Um, so 17 is a prime number because the only um, factors for 17 are 17 and 1, and, and any other numbers don't divide into 17. Um, 15 is not a prime number because 15 has factors such as 1, 3, 5, and 15, and that's more than two factors. And so that means 15 is not a prime number. So on the, on the left, we see a, a grid and all the yellow highlighted numbers in the grid are, are all prime numbers. So two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, and so on. So is one a prime number? Enter your answer in the chat. So it only has one factor. And in the definition, we can see a prime number is a number that has two factors. So um, that is correct, is it's neither a composite or a prime. A composite number is then essentially any number that isn't prime that has more than two factors. Then, wait, no mind. All right, so it's 91 a prime number. But wouldn't one's factor, wait. Oh, no, no, no. I got it. Okay, so 91 is not a prime number. So that's because 91 has factors like 7 and 13. 7 times 13 equals 91. So the AMC will often give you uh, questions like 91 because um, everyone knows that numbers like 12 and 24 are composite. But numbers like 91, they're not so obvious. And a lot of people at first glance, they think it is a prime number, just because off the top of your head, you can't really think of anything that um, is divisible into 91. So you should be, you should always try every number instead of just looking at it and guessing. Is 101 a prime number?
Okay, so 101 is a prime number. Um, so 101 only has the factors 101 and one, um, and there's no, there's no other factors that divide into 101. Okay, so now we will be talking about prime factorization. So what exactly is prime factorization? It's where you find the prime factors that multiply to become a number. Um, and since each prime number has only a factor of itself in one, each prime factorization is unique to a number. So let's take a random number, 2022, and find the prime factorization. So after you're top, off the top of your head, you can see that it's divisible by two because it ends in an even number, right? Um, and then, um, so we will factor out two, and then um, we can also see that it's divisible by three because two plus two plus two is a multiple of three um, because two plus two plus two is six. And then we are left with 337. And 337 is a prime number. So we'll um, see that the prime factorization of 2022 is two times three times 337. So find the prime factorization of 2025. Um, type your answers in the chat. Um, so uh, just a thing to note, um, when you're finding the prime factorization of the number, Always look for um, always look for the um, easiest primes, which you for, for the primes that you can tell are divisible, uh, that divide um, the number itself, and then look for the bigger primes because it's easier to find the prime factorization of a smaller number um, than a bigger. Okay, so make sure that when you're typing the prime factorization, you're actually having prime numbers and not any composite numbers. Um, so I am starting to see some right answers. So, um, yeah. So, um, again, type your answer in the chat. So the answer is 3 to the power 4 times 5 squared. And we can um, draw a factor tree. So um, 2025, you can tell, is divisible by 25 because it ends in 25. Right, um, and any number that ends in 25, it, that ends in 0, 0, 25, 50, 75, or 100 is divisible by 25. So we divide out the 25, which is just 5 squared, and we get 81. 81 is 9 squared, and 9's prime factorization is 3 squared. So 3 squared squared is 3 to the power of 4. So then we get 3 to the power of 4 times 5 squared as our answer. Okay, second part. Um, find the prime factorization of 2021. Um, so this might be a bit harder since the primes are bigger. Um, however, um, you should um, be able to find the prime factorization by dividing out primes from this number, by finding the primes that divide 2021. Um, this is just a tip for you guys. Um, the AMC always asks questions pertaining to the year number that you're taking the AMC in. So if you're taking the AMC in, let's say, 2022 or 2023, you should always know the prime factorization of that year number ahead of the test because they will, they'll ask at least five questions pertaining to 2020, whatever year, year, year you're taking the test in. And so it might just save you some time to ask a question about like the prime factorization of that year. Yeah, and um, as you'll learn um, in the next class, um, the prime factorization can be used for many purposes. So the question itself doesn't have to specifically ask for the prime factorization of a number for it to still be using the prime factorization of a number. Um, so um, I'm not seeing any answers. Um, so I'll give you guys another minute and if no one has answered by then, I shall um, show you the answer. Um, okay, so um, 2021 is not a prime number. Um, that's what I'm going to say right now. Um, because um, it's divisible by um, prime. Okay, yeah, I see in the chat um, someone got it right. So um, it's 43 times 47. So um, we can draw a factor tree. And so basically, when you're finding the prime factorization of a number, um, divide as many um, primes. So try to find 
the times which divide that number. And once you get a whole number as a result of that bigger number, one divided by a prime number, um, find the prime factorization of that. Um, because as I said earlier, it's much easier, uh, right, right. But when you're doing it by yourself, like um, if you're um, just like um, trying to find the prime factorization of a number, um, you can use a calculator, like not on the AMC test itself, but like if you're trying to memorize the primes of a number before the test, you want to, you can use a calculator. Um, as right? you do this more, you're going to get faster at it. Right now, finding the prime factorization of 2021 might take some time, but as you do more and more for these obscure numbers, you're eventually going to be able to do it really fast. Yeah. Um, so, okay. um, so from here, we can get 43 times 47 as our number, as our answer. Okay, now um, find the prime factorization of 2023. Again, um, 2023 is not a prime number. Um, so there will be some bigger um, uh, primes. Um, and type your answer in the chat again. Um, and yeah. Also, if at any point um, during this class you have any questions, um, feel free to unmute, type it in the chat, or if after the class itself you have any questions um, about like homework or about um, like what we're learning, you can always um, uh, message, um, email us at mathemaofficial at gmail.com. Okay, um, so make sure that the numbers you're finding, yeah. Okay, so the numbers you're finding have to be fine. So I see um, some of you listed out um, some of the factors of it, but we're finding the prime factorization again. So the answer is, seven times 17 squared. So we can draw factor sheets. So um, we divide 2023 by seven and we see that 289 is a factor. So 289 is 17 squared. Um, and you may not know your squares off the top of your head. However, they're very good to memorize or to remember um, because um, they really come in handy while you're um, doing math um, or while you're doing math competition. Um, so we get 17 squared times 7, or 7 times 17 squared, as our prime factorization. Okay, so now we will be doing some prime factorization problems. Um, so um, feel free to um, type your answers in the chat, like private message them to me, or to just type them in the general chat. Um, and um, after you solve each question, write the question number and then write your answer. So that um, uh, so that um, I know which problem which answer you are referring to. And again, as stated earlier, find the smallest or the most obvious factors, uh, primes that factor into a number, and then divide it um, by that prime factor. So then you can find the prime factorization of a smaller number which will be potentially easy. Okay, so I see some answers for the first question. Um, and again, make sure when you're finding the prime factorization, make sure that each of the numbers that are in your prime factorization are actually prime and not composite. Because 
um, it won't be the prime factorization if not all the numbers are prime. And um, if you have some, a like if you aren't used to finding the prime factorization of numbers, or like if you're um, not that quick at it, remember um, the first thing that matters is that you know the content rather than how quick you solve it. You can learn the content first. You can work on um, quickening up how um, like the work you do, but you first need to learn the actual concepts. So um, yeah. The best way to get faster is to just practice more and more questions. Because as you practice more, you learn more about prime numbers and which prime numbers multiply to become other prime numbers. So you can do and, arithmetic way faster. Right. It becomes more intuitive the more practice you get. Um, and it will require less thought or less um, energy or effort um, to find the prime factorizations or to do any math concept in general once you get um, a lot of practice. Um, so um, make sure you practice. Um, everything you learn um, if you want to be quick at it. So um, I see that some of you guys are still typing composite numbers in your prime factorizations. Um, so again, don't do that. Um, uh, and to make sure, um, so you should memorize, again, as stated earlier, you should memorize the first few prime numbers, um, like maybe up to 100, um, so that when you're um, finding the prime factorization or using the prime factorization in general, you can actually like, um, it's, you don't uh, mess up and accidentally use a composite number. So um, I see that some of you are done um, with the um, problems ever. Um, we'll just be taking one more minute um, and then seeing the answers. Um, so yeah. And others um, are still like on the first few problems. That's also perfectly OK. Um, when you get more practice, it will be much easier and you'll be much quicker at doing this. Um, if I need time factorization. So, yeah. And also remember, this meeting is being recorded, so if at any time you want to go back and look at some of the questions and see how they were solved or something like that, um, you can always um, look at the recording and the slides. Um, also, since these slides cover tomorrow's content also, um, so this presentation also has tomorrow's content, um, this presentation will only be posted um, after uh, tomorrow's class. 
So it might be better to look at the recording if you have any questions today. Okay, so um, six minutes are up. So um, the answers to the questions are, so for the first question, find the parent factorization of one, two, four, five. Um, so one, two, four, five is divisible by five. That's obvious at first. So we did five out five, and then we get 249. 249, when you sum up the digits, is 15, um, right? And 15 is a, a multiple of three, meaning that 249 will also be a multiple of three. Um, so we divide 249 by three, and we get 83. 83 is a prime number, meaning that the prime factorization of 1, 2, 4, 5 is 3 times 5 times 83. For the next number, um, find the prime factorization of 1776. So we can tell that 2 is a divisor um, of this number. So we divide our 2 and we get 888, um, or 888. And 888 is also a multiple of 2. It's also a multiple of 8, as we can tell, right? Um, so we divide out 2 to the power of 3. Um, and when we divide out 2 to the power of 3, we get 111. I saw many of your answers um, had um, 111 as a prime factor. Um, and 111 is not um, prime. And you can tell this um, when you add up the digits, you see that they sum to 3. And 3 is a multiple of 3. Um, so yeah, as Rishabh said in the chat, um, um, know the basic divisibility rules so that um, you can easily find the prime factorization of number C if it's um, prime or not. So um, that means that the prime factorization of 1776 is to the power of 4 times 3 times 37. Um, then uh, we can see that the next problem is find the prime factorization of 387. So 387 is divisible by 3 because when you um, add up the digits, you get um, 18, um, right, which is a multiple of 3. It's also a multiple of 9, so we can tell that it's divisible by 9. So we divide out 3 squared, and then we get 129. 120, um, sorry, we get 43. And um, that means that the prime factorization is 3 squared times 43. Um, and then the uh, fourth problem was find the prime factorization of 9, 5, um, 8, 3, right? And um, when you, um, so 9, 5, 8, 3 is divisible by 7. So we divide out 7 and we get 1, 3, 6, 9. So um, you may at first think that this is a prime number. Um, it is not. Um, it is a square. And um, although you sh probably should not memorize your squares up to like 40 or something, um, it could be useful. Um, and in general, um, so you might not want to memorize your squares up till 37 squared or something, and that's perfectly fine. Um, however, um, being able to figure out that it's a square um, is very useful. Um, so we get 7 times 37 squared for the prime factorization of that. So 403, okay, so 40,320 is very big. So we, um, so although you may not need to create a factor tree for the other numbers above, you should um, draw a factor tree for um, big numbers because it's very easy to make a mistake, um, very easy to forget that you divided a number by a certain number unless you draw out a factor tree. So um, this is the answer. So 40320 is divisible by 2 squared. Um, it's divisible by 4 because 40,320 ends in 20. So we divide out four and we get one, we get 10,080. And we divide out four again because 80 is a multiple of four. Um, and that means that one, that 10,080 is also a multiple of four. So we get 2,520 and we divide out two squared again because 20 is a multiple of four and then we get 630. 30 is not a multiple of four. However, um, the number does end in an even number. So that means that it is divisible by two and then we get um, uh, 315 as one of the factors um, after we divide by 2. 315, um, when you sum up the numbers, um, is it's 9. And 9 is a multiple of 9, meaning that um, 315 is a multiple of 9. Um, so we divide out 3 squared, and then we get 35, and 35 factors are 5 and 7. So we write out the prime factorization as 2 to the power of 7 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7. Um, Ishani, can you go to the previous slide for a second? Okay. So um, when Ishani was talking about number four, 
um, about how knowing squares can be very useful. And the example is like one, three, six, nine is 37 squared. Um, if you aren't good at memorizing, then when we look at one, three, six, nine, we recognize that 40 squared is 1600. So um, one, three, six, nine is a little bit less than 1600. So that means the square root of one, three, six, nine, if it has one, is probably going to be a little bit less than 40. So then you can probably estimate it's around 37, 38, 36. But when you square 37, it has to end in a nine because seven squared is 49. So when we look at one, three, six, nine, we know it's a little, the square is a little bit less than 40 and we know it has to end in a seven. Um, well, it probably does. So then we can kind of, you know, um, make an estimate that it's probably 37 squared. That, those are the kind of tricks that will um, be very handy when you're doing questions like these. Right, so remember just um, when you're squaring numbers, there's always gonna be a pattern in the last digit um, of the numbers themselves, So, um, which we're going to be learning about um, in one of the later classes. So um, it's good to realize the patterns that you are seeing um, and using them to easy, to easily like logic your way through um, certain problems. Um, I have a question. Okay. So if you wanted to find out if a number was a prime number or not, would you just try only dividing it by prime numbers before it? Or like say if uh, I didn't know if 18 was a prime number or like 16 was a prime number, if I do that, like, uh, it isn't, but see if I didn't know. Would I try using four or should I just try the prime numbers before like, two, three? Um, so uh, you should. Okay, so you should try using prime numbers rather than using all numbers, because all numbers that are not prime, that are not one, um, will just be um, uh, like a product of um, certain um, prime numbers. So to cut down on the amount of time you use, um, you should try doing it um, with only prime numbers. Um, but also, um, if you're like, if it's a very big number and you're getting to like the hundreds, you should um it's fine to try like every odd number because like um it'll be hard after a certain point to um figure out which um, numbers are prime and which ones aren't and it's just easier to um do like in general numbers and also when you're when you're, when you're dividing by prime numbers to see if a number um the, for the, finding out the prime factorization so um anand you said 18 for example so when you're dividing by prime numbers you don't want to divide by every prime number less than 18 um, you want to divide by every prime number less than the square root of 18 so the square root of 18 is a little bit more than four it's between four and five so you want to do every prime number until um four i would say um so if you're doing a number like 49 you want to divide by every prime number um, less than or equal to the square root of 49. So two, three, five, seven are the numbers that you're gonna want to test. Yeah, and the reasoning behind that is that um, numbers, um, like factors come in pairs whenever they're with a number, um, right? Um, so they come in pairs. So for example, for 18, three and six multiply together to make 18. So, um, if, so we would not need to test the greater um, prime numbers because uh, the prime number is greater or the number is greater than the square root of 18 because um, because when we're testing the numbers less than 18, we are um, we are finding one half of the um, pairs themselves. And um, that means we do not actually need to do the math to find the other half of the pair. Um, it's like we do not need to see if they're divisible by the other half of the pair of factors. So, yeah. Um, so this, um, so now we're going to be doing GCF and LCM. Um, yeah. All right, so GCF and LCM. So GCF stands for greatest common factor and LCM stands for um, least common multiple. So the greatest common factor is the, as the name implies, it's the greatest integer to divide into all the given numbers. So for example, if the numbers are 16 and 24, the greatest common factor would be eight because 
8 is the largest number that divides into both 16 and 24. Yeah, so that there's an, another example. If we have 25 and 60, the GCF is 5 because 5 divides into both 25 and 60, and no number greater than 5 would divide into those numbers. Um, another example is one if we're, we're doing if we're doing the GCF of 150, 270, and 330, it's going to be 30 because 30 divides into all of those numbers, but no number greater than 30 divides into those numbers. So LCM is the least common multiple. So it's also, as the name implies, it's the smallest integer to be divisible by all the given numbers. So one example would be um, for the LCM of 25 and 60, it would be 300 because 300 is divisible by both 25 and 60. And no smaller integers less than 300 are divisible by both um, 25 and 60. If we're doing 150, 270, and 330, um, the LCM would be um, 14,850. And it's the same reason for the rest of the examples. There's no number less than that that is divisible by all of the numbers. For example two, um, questions like that with larger numbers, you don't want to just test random numbers until you get it. Um, we'll show you how to deal with those in following slides. So here's how to find the LCM and GCF. So to find the GCF, um, you want to find, uh, so if you want to find the G, uh, GCF of numbers, let's say A and B, we want to find the prime factorization of both A and B. So we take, when we, once we find the prime factorizations, we want to take the shared prime factors of A and B and multiply them out to find the GCF of A and B. So we're going to show you examples of this later, just because reading, reading that can be a little bit confusing. So this can be applied to all multiple numbers. So example one, find the GCF of 231 and 497. So 231 is 3 times 7 times 11. That is the prime factorization. And then the prime factorization of 497 is 7 times 71. That is the prime factorization. So in both of these numbers, we can see that 7 is the common um, uh, prime number in the prime factorizations. So we can see that the greatest common factor would just be 7. So another example is find the GCF of 1,095, 9,300, in 2,835. So the prime factorization of 1,095 is 2 squared times 3 times 5 squared times 31. Um, and so the prime factorization of 9,300 would be uh, I think that's on the next slide. Okay, so it's three to the fourth times five times seven. So already we can see that we have a common of five and two. Um, and then, you know, we have the prime factorization of 9,300. So the common factors are three and five. So that means that we can just multiply three and five and we get that the GCF would be 15. Okay, also um, earlier you misspoke. It was five and three, not yeah, five. Yeah, I, I accidentally, um, yeah, made a mistake. Yeah. So here's how to find LCM. It's very similar to GCF, except you're multiplying more numbers. So um, as you and GCF, you find the prime factorization of both numbers, and then um, you, you list all the prime factors, prime numbers found, and the most often that they occur for any one given prime. And then so you multiply these out to find the LCM. So this is kind of hard to understand. So we're gonna go through some examples. So solve for the LCM of 231 and 497. Um, so 231 is three times seven times 11. And uh, I believe these are the same numbers as the last slide. And 497 is seven times 71. So we can see seven is overlapping. So we're only gonna multiply that once. 
Um, we also have three, 11 and 71 that only occur once. So we're just gonna multiply all of these numbers. We're gonna get three times seven times 11 times 71, which is gonna be 16,401, which is the LCM. So the next example, find the LCM of the same numbers as the previous slide. Um, so 1,095 is three times five times 73. 9,300 is two squared times three times five squared times 31. And 2,835 is three to the fourth times five times seven. So we can see um, three, we're gonna multiply that probably once. We're gonna do, we have a five and a five squared. So we're gonna multiply the five squared. We have a two squared, we're gonna multiply a two squared. Um, we're gonna do three fourths and we're gonna multiply seven, I would say. So the LCM would be two squared times three fourths times five squared times seven times a 31 times 73. So as you can see, we're just multiplying all of the numbers that occur once. And then for the rest of the numbers that occur multiple times, we're multiplying those numbers, the maximum power that they occur at. So two squared and three fourths and five squared. Um, although there are other fives in the, in the prime factorizations, five squared is the largest one. So when you multiply by five squared, you're gonna include the smaller numbers in that as well. Right, so um, Rishab just um, said this, but just to restate it. Um, so for example, you see the highest power of two um, in any of these numbers is two squared. The highest power of three is three to the power of four. The highest power of five is five squared. The highest power of seven is seven to the power of one. The highest power of 31 is 30, uh, the, is 31 to the power of one. And the highest power of 73 is 73 to the power of one. Um, and that means that um, we'd multiply out those um, greatest uh, exponents, the um, primes of the greatest exponents out. And that's how we um, get it. So um, yeah. You just take the prime with like the most, like, I mean, just take the number that has the most of that number. Like, for example, you took uh, 2835, you took the power, you took three times to the power of four from there, but you didn't take it from the other numbers. Right, right. Yeah, because we're including the other numbers in that. Right, because three to the power of four is divisible by three to the power of one. If we multiply the other numbers that are also in there, um, but aren't aren't in three to the fourth, so if you multiply the other two threes, it would still be a multiple, but it wouldn't be the least common multiple. It would just be a common multiple. Mm -hmm. Right. So, do you guys have any questions? <clears throat> um, okay. If you don't have any questions, we will be moving on. What is a book? Can you repeat that? Why is it broke like that when you can do it? Wait, sorry, what? No mind. I got it. Okay. Um All right, so I wouldn't work on properties of LCM and GCF. So if you have two numbers A and B, the GCF uh, a of, the GCF times the LCM of A and B is going to equal A times B, and this is very useful. So we're going to look at an example. Yeah, so this is just uh, that written in another form. So the LCM of A and B is equal to A times B divided by the GCF of A and B. This is useful because if you already have, um, if you already have the LCM in two numbers, you can solve for the GCF without actually having to write out the prime factorization and doing all of that stuff. Um, is there supposed to be a question there? Okay, yeah, so the LCF of 90 and 81. Um, so find the LCM of both of those numbers. All right, so 
the GCF of 90 and 81 is nine. Um, that's the greatest common factor that divides into both of those numbers. And then um, the, so when we're solving for the LCM as given in the formula above, the GCF times the LCM is gonna equal to both of the numbers multiplied. So we're just going to do 90 times 81 divided by the GCF. So 90, 90 times 81 divided by 9, it's going to equal 810. So we're just going to plug all of those numbers. Because solving for the GCF of 90 and 81 is way easier than solving for the LCM. And that's how it is for most cases. The GCF is much easier than the LCM. So if we just solve for the GCF and then uh, do 90 times 81 divided by the GCF, we can get the LCM. And this is particularly useful for larger numbers um, that take lots of time for the LCM. Does anybody have any questions? Because this can be a little bit confusing as well. Okay, um, if nobody has any questions, we will be continuing. All right, so if the LCM of X and Y is 13 and the product of X and Y is 247, find the GCF of X and Y. So um, we're just going to use the same formula that is mentioned at the top. Um, so enter your answers in the chat. Okay, so we have some answers in the chat. We have 19. So the LCM of, of X and Y, um, I'm just gonna restate the question. So since it's 13 and the product is 247, we can just do 247 divided by 13 to find the GCF. So that would probably equal 19 based on, yeah. So 247 divided by 13 is 19, which is the GCF. So if it, like, Finding the GCF of 247 or finding the GCF of whatever the two numbers are, that would be way, it would take like a much longer time. Like if you didn't know this like formula, but you had this information first, you would have to like test out different numbers um, that have a product of 247. Then you would have to test of all of the different pairs, what the LCM is for each of those pairs. And then you would have to find the GCF of that. So. Um, this this can save you a lot of time. Could you stop here for a second? Yeah. If you don't know this that well, you might want to write it down. Or you can come back to the slides tomorrow or watch the recording. Yeah. And um, just a note, um, this does not, this formula does not work for more than two numbers since um, it's more complicated on uh, the LCM and the GCF. Um, so, yeah. I have a question. Um, yeah. um, Go ahead. How can there be an LCM, LCM of two numbers if, because 13 is a prime number. So how could the number not be 13 and one or something like that? Um, so, uh, okay, so, um, so yeah, um, okay, that's a good question. That's a good, okay, so that's because this is, like, there's no pair of numbers that actually satisfies this. Um, right. It could be a fraction, actually. Right. However, yeah. um, it 
Um, right. The, the okay. AMC likely wouldn't ask you a question like this. Um, and if it would, then the numbers might be fractions. Um, it would probably run GCF of X yeah. and Y is 13 and then find the LCM. But yeah, um, the same thing applies um, either way. But yeah. Okay. So um, we will be moving on to questions. Um, so to problems. Yeah, again, the best way to get better is to do practice. Right. Um, so find the GCF and LCM of 576 right. and 336. And you can use a, uh, a calculator for right now. Um, as you do more and more, you should try to cut down on calculator usage. Right. Um, so you'll have two minutes um, to solve this. Um, and if you have any questions while solving it, um, feel free to unmute and ask. Okay, um, so the GCF of these numbers is 48, and the LCM is um, 4032. So um, to solve this, um, it, we can see that 576 has factors of um, 2 to the power of 6 and 3 to the power of 2. So that's the prime factorization. Um, and then 336 has a prime factorization of 2 to the power of 4 times 3 times 7. Right, um, so that means that the GCF is two to the power of four times three, um, which is forty-eight, and then that means that the LCM is four thousand thirty-two, um, because that would be um, five seven six times three three six divided by forty-eight, um, and that's how we would get um, the GCF as forty-eight and the LCM as four thousand thirty-two. Mm -hmm. Um, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but if not, um, come to. Okay, so the question is, Find the LCM of A and B, given that the GCF is 16, and the product of A and B is one fourth of the square of LCM of A and B. So um, you might want to write out an equation, and it is fine if you do not know how to write out an equation, um, uh, but this requires a little bit of algebra or pre-algebra. Um, so yeah.
Um, remember that it says that the product of a and b is one fourth of the square of the LCM of a and b, not that it is one fourth. So um, the answer should not be a fraction. Okay, so um, just a hint. So the product of A and B would be the LCM of A times the LCM of, of times the, sorry, would be the LCM of A and B multiplied by the GTF of A and B. Um, so you can just set one variable. You do not need to find what A and B um, are individually. Wait, so how do you not have to find what A and B is? Because that's how you apply the formula, right? Okay, so so the formula um, that we learned earlier shows that LCM of A and B times GCF of A and B is equal to A times B. So you wouldn't actually have to find what A times B is because um, that would just be LCM of A and B times GCF of A and B, which would be LCM of A and B multiplied by 16. Um, so you wouldn't actually have to find um, the value itself. If you don't understand that, she can like write it out and explain if just saying it doesn't really make sense. Right. Um, well, I shall, okay. Um, so, LCM of A times B times GCF um, of A and B is equal to A times B. So that means that um, the product of A and B is LCM of A and B times 16, um, it, which is one fourth of the LCM A comma B Is the equation I wrote in the chat correct? Like the one sixteen plus um that will yeah, okay. So um right. So your equation is correct and that will work. Um so okay. So let me just write this up. So you would get um so you would substitute x for LCM of A and B, or you don't have to substitute even. You can, um, so if you um, divide both sides by LCM of A and B, you get 16 is equal to 1 fourth times LCM of A and B, um, right? And then you'd multiply both sides by 4, um, right? So you can cancel out that 1 fourth. And then you get 64 is the LCM of A. Doesn't it say it's of the square of the LCM of A and B, right? So, um, so the L so the product of A and B would be sixty four times sixteen. The square of the LCM of A and B would be sixty four squared. So then the product of A and B would be um, uh, would be um one fourth of sixty four um squared. Um, so let me just. Click to the answer. Um, so 
Um, so you can see here, um, 16 times LCM of A and B is equal to LCM of A and B squared divided by 4. Um, and then you multiply both sides by 4, and then you get 64. Um, so does that make sense to everyone? Because this problem did rely a little bit on algebra, um, so it um, might not make sense parts of it um, to some people. So if you have any questions, ask them. What happened to the square of LCM? Um, you divide both sides by LCM of A and B, and then that square cancels out. Wait, what? Could you see, uh, see that again, please? So if you, okay. Um, so, um, oh, you can, um, well, it's 16 times LCM of A and B. And then we have LCM of A and B squared. So if we do LCM of A and B squared divided by LCM of A and B, all we have left over is LCM of A and B. Right. Um, and just like to note, LCM of A and B squared would just be LCM of A and B times LCM of A and B. So when you divide both sides by LCM of A and B, you just be canceling one of those LCM of A and Bs. If it's like if we have 16 times X equals X squared divided by four. It's like yeah. that, you know? Yeah. It's just X is LCM of A and B. Right. Um, so yeah, so then this four would multiply with this 16 and then four times 16 is 64. So oh. um, yeah, does that make sense? Oh, so if there's a square on, like if there's two X's on both sides and there's a square on one side, then you could just be, uh, divide X by both sides. Um, right, so if you have a term A, so um, yeah, if you have X um, times something is equal to, um, yeah, so X squared is just 64. Um, times um, x to the power of um, something else, then you can just divide both sides by x because x to the power of something is just x multiplied by itself that something amount of times, um, right? And then when you divide by x, it would be um, just x times, if you divide by x, it would be x, um, that power would be reduced by one. Um, and yeah. Um, so does that make sense to everyone? Because um, I know um, very few of you put your answers in the chat. So I don't know if um, that means you did not understand it or um, you uh, just took some more time than other people. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Don't be afraid of getting it wrong. Like that doesn't really, you know, uh, it's like it's fine if you get a wrong a question wrong sometimes. Um, that's just how you'll learn, you know? Yeah. So, and don't be afraid of asking any questions. Nobody's going to, you know, laugh at you or anything. Right. Um, you're, you're here to learn. So, by And if you ask that, if you ask a question, I, I guarantee somebody else in the class has the same question as you. They're just not asking it. Right. So, so um, you're helping others along with helping. Yeah, them. just, so just don't hesitate. Um, ask a question if you have one. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, some people are like, um, it makes sense now. So hopefully that means no one has any questions. Um, and if so, we will move on to the next problem. All right. Problem three. <clears throat> um, so how many positive integers less than 100 are multiples of two, three, and five? So this might be a little bit hard to solve for. And um, but when we explain it, be sure to pay a lot of attention. And if you can watch it again, like tomorrow, just because the AMC will definitely like 100% ask a lot of questions similar to this. They, they love uh, any competition math. Uh, will they'll ask tons of questions similar to this. Um, right. So it's, it's kind of important. And I'll give you an hint. It, it involves like, common multiples right uh, so um, don't also, be fooled by common multiples so. right um also also um a lot of the time they ask for like something similar to this as in how many positive integers less than 100 are multiples of two three or five and yeah. that would involve a little bit of counting um so yeah yeah so this is two three and five so this would be easier than yeah. um, the or problem. If, if we look at questions like two, three, or five, then um, that'll take a lot more time. If anybody of you guys are taking counting, then um, that you will. will yeah. 
questions like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this problem um, is significantly easier than what it would be if it were or. Um, or makes a big difference. Right. Because um, or is adding and is multiplying. So. Right. Okay, so a lot of people seem to be um, getting it. So. Yeah, so the LCM is just 30 of the three numbers. So then we can do how many um, multiples of 30 are less than 100. So the integers less than 100 that are divisible by 2, 3, and 5 would just be 30, 60, and 90. Right. Okay, so the next problem, wait, does anyone have any questions on that? Um, if not, okay. Um, so this question is, Mrs. Chandler has a class of 20 kids and wants to give each student at least one pencil to use. Pencils are sold in packages of 12. If Ms. Chandler wants each student to have the same amount of pencils with no extra left over, what is the smallest number of packages of pencils she can buy? So um, a lot of the times you're going to get problems which don't at first seem to involve certain um, math concepts um, since they're in like word problem format or they're in like um, some other format. But a lot of the times you'll find that um, many of the basic concepts are used in problems where they don't seem as likely to be used. Okay, so a lot of people seem to be getting the answer, so I shall um, show the answer. Um, so the end, So the question asks for the smallest number of packages of pencils she could buy. So if you put in 240 pencils, although that is right, that would not be accepted as a correct answer because it is not referring to the number of pencils, but rather the number of packages. And the AMC will, like, since there's multiple options, they will give you options like 240, just to throw you off. Um, so if you make like a mistake, then they know that, you know, they're very aware. So they'll put options like 240. Right. So a, lot of, a lot of the times they give um, answers which include um, other, like, the correct answer for other aspects of the question. However, it's not the actual correct answer. So what this question is basically asking for is the least common multiple of 20 and 12 divided by the pencils per box. So the least common multiple of 20 and 12 is um, 120, um, right? Or sorry, it's 60. Um, and then you divide that by 12 pencils per box, right? And then 60 divided by 12 is equal to five. Um, so that would mean that there are five boxes or five packages of pencils that she could buy. Problem number five. So buns are sold in packs of 12, hamburger patties are sold in packs of eight, and veggie burger patties are sold in packs of 10. If both hamburgers and veggie burger patty sandwiches are served, and there are no extra buns, hamburgers, or veggie burgers, what is the least number of sandwiches that could be served at the picnic? Uh, make sure you don't make any silly mistakes just because there's a lot of words. And um, when you guys were finding the LCM and GCF or um, either of them earlier, um, I saw that a lot of you were not actually um, finding the LCM and GCF or either of those but you were finding out what they multiplied out to, what the numbers multiplied out to. Um, and that can be a very big error and it can cost you like um, points in AMCs. So you make need sure to understand not... that every point matters. Like even if it doesn't be AMC eight, if you take AMC eight, you're likely to take uh, other AMCs when you get older, like AMC 10, AMC 12. And in those, every point really matters because every point's worth six points. So um, it can make a big difference between you know, qualifications and stuff. Right. Like for example, if you get a question wrong, that could like stop you from going to AIM or something. So, yeah. yeah. 
I'm kind of confused on what we're trying to find here because it just needs to be confusing. So you're trying to find the number of sandwiches, so or the number of burgers. So burgers would include both veggie ones and um, hamburger ones, right? So um, make sure to include them. Um, so I see a correct answer. So I shall explain the problem. So the answer is 36 burgers. And um, so if we have at least one of both veggie and hamburger packets, we'll have at least 18 burgers. And um, it must be a factor of 12 patties. So that means that we um, should have 36 burgers, so, right? Because the least common multiple of 12 and 18 is 36. Um, and it never says that they should be equal. However, um, if you're trying to find the least amount, um, right? So for example, um, if you try to get a number less than 36, like for example, using only the um, hamburger patties, um, uh, the least common multiple of eight and 12 would be greater than 36. It would be two to the power of three multiplied by three. So, um, wait, this sorry. This question's a great example of why you shouldn't assume. Um, a lot of people like assume things like, you know, well, they have to use two buns in a sandwich. So, you know, it should actually be six. Don't assume anything aside for what the AMC gives you um, because then it'll just like throw you off. Don't overthink it. Don't think that they're trying to trick you just go based off of exactly what information they're giving you. So don't assume anything that is extra. Wait, so they're not going to ever like give you a trick question where you're going to have to think. In t it's in, yeah. They will give you trick questions, but it's not going to be like this, you know? It's, it's not, not going to be something based off of. Yeah, yeah it's not going to be based off of something that's like in real life where you have to overthink some uh, in real life scenario. You know? Okay, but if they give you a problem like... Uh, there were 30 kids and four kids could be in a school bus. How many school bus you need? You really like do a fraction by your half to round? They, okay, so so here's the thing the math itself might be hard and they might give you trick answers, but the question itself will never be where you have to overthink specific aspects that are not related to the math. So, um, yeah, just nothing will be based off of what you know outside of math, essentially. Right. And um, most of the time they'll say like assuming that like for this question, they might say like assuming that each um, sandwich has only one um, uh, uh, patty, right? Um, or they might not say that because that's just like generally what you do, right? Um, so yeah. And also yeah. Um, in, the, in the past four years, I've only seen one question and that is based off of outside knowledge. Dushan, if you remember the newspaper question, uh no mm -hmm. there's like questions some i've seen questions about newspapers where you have to know how newspapers are formatted but that's very rare so right, right. Yeah, so i think we can move on to the next question now right right um also um when i explained this question i said that um you like you can't use just one of each kind yeah that's because it says both hamburgers and veggie burgers are sold so there would be 18 and then if you added eight to that you would have 26 which is not a multiple of 12 and if you added 10 to that you would have 28, which is also not a multiple of 12, but if you add eight and 18, you would get 36. However, if you added like another, if you added more, it would be more than 36 and that would not be the least amount. So, yeah. Wait, so for my example, would you say the answer would be seven and a half or would you say it would be eight? Um, can you repeat your example, please? Uh, if there were four, if there were 30 kids and you need it and each school bus could hold four kids. How many school buses would you need? Um, you, it would say a whole number. You will um, always, it, it, the answer choice is- It'll say what's the least number of whole number of buses. Right. It'll it's the least say, integer number of buses. It's not going to say how many buses. It's going to be very specific. Right. And if you're ever in doubt, use logic. Can you really get half a bus? The answer or, would be- Or no. ask the question. Or like ask the proctor the question. If it if you do think they, they might base off of right you can you can't ask them to do the math but you can ask them is this asking for um is this um are they asking for an integer and also um so you can't ask um the proctors for math counts anything but for AMC um uh you might not need to ask the proctor because you're given the answer choices and the answer choices themselves will be like like unless yeah. one of them would be like um. A fraction or something.
then you should not be concerned about whether or not you should be getting a fraction, you know? Yeah. Um, so. But it'll usually specify whole number or teacher or whatever. Right. Okay. I'm gonna shop. Yeah, so Johnny had a full bag of apple seeds. He found that if he repeatedly removed the apple seeds at two at a time, um, one seed remained in the bag at the end. If he repeatedly removed the bags three, four, five, or six at, um, at a time from the full bag, one seed remained in the bag at the end. What is the least number of seeds he could have in the full bag? This is also a very um, common type of question. Um, try not to guess random numbers. Um, right, this uses LCM and GCF. This uses so. LCM and GCF, so it'll be very use, uh, useful. Thank you. Um, so um, you are very close in what you are saying. I think you might have um, made Yeah, I mean, they're very close, but uh, there's one thing that's wrong. Yeah. Okay, so someone just private message to answer. Wait, what? I meant LCM, not GCF. Okay, yes, that will be correct. Right. So someone just private message to answer to me, and um, so the answer is... Um, so I'll give you guys the rest of you 30 uh, seconds, and then you can type your answers in the chat. And remember, again, the least common multiple of numbers is not the product of the numbers. Okay? Um, like Don't do that. Right. Unless they're both prime. Right. Or if, they, if they're, if they're um, relatively prime. So their greatest common factor would be 1. Okay, so I think you can explain now. Yeah, so it says we we were left over with one in all of those scenarios. So that means in each of those scenarios, we have a multiple of the number plus one extra. And we're finding the least number that could satisfy all of those numbers. So we're just going to find the LCM, so six is the multiple of all of those numbers, and then we just add one, which would be 61. So mm -hmm. does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Um, remember, if you have questions at any time, feel free to unmute um, or feel free to type it in the chat. You can private message it to me or Rashad and we'll answer it out loud so everyone can hear the answer. Um, and yeah. We won't like say your name or anything. Right. Okay, so problem seven. What is the ratio of the least common multiple of 180 and 594 to the greatest common factor of 180 and 594? So um, also I'd like to note that some of these problems are, um, they are AMC problems or they are like AMC problems where the numbers have been changed. Um, so you are getting AMC practice right now. Um, so these problems or these types of problems will or can be asked in um, the AMC. So make sure you know how to solve these types of problems. And remember, again, as I said earlier, a lot of the times you may not think that a problem will use a certain concept, but it does. And um, it might be like in a word problem format, or it might be in like an equation format, but you find that you're using properties which weren't explicitly stated in the question itself. So make sure you know what a question is asking for and how you think you're going to get it when you're um, looking at a question. Um, a key for whenever you're doing um, ma um, any competitive math problem is to ask yourself, what am I trying to find and how am I trying to find it? Um, and if you do not know the answer to either of those questions, you should probably skip the question because it will take a significant amount of time that could be used for questions you know how to solve or that you know um, you know you could be getting other questions right rather than paying attention to this one question so yeah on the AMC um, the first going high score it's critical to know techniques and um, like strategies as well instead of just content right right however um, you first need to learn the content before you learn strategy. Yeah, that, that comes after, but, you know, strategy and technique is very important. That's taking skills. Right. 
make sure you know, like make sure when you're, before you take the AMC, make sure you take practice tests. They can, um, you can search up AMC A test. Um, you should not need to pay for them. Know the test rules very well. Just yeah. because um, a lot of people, they don't know you can take stuff like rollers and protractors. And in the AMC, uh, it says no, nothing's to scale. But in reality, everything is to scale. They make everything through digital, you know, software. So everything is to scale. So worst case on the questions like geometry, you can always use like a ruler or a protract or something if you're trying to guess. Right. Uh, and also remember, if you're taking math counts, that's a different story. You cannot take a ruler or a protractor. Um, so like, don't do that mistake because you can get disqualified if you, you know, use. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you know the rules of whatever competition you're in and you know, um, like how you can use those rules to your advantage. So, yeah. So I see a couple of answers. Um, so I shall, okay, wait, so sorry. Um, this, um, these are the answer choices. So, um, make sure that your answer is one of those choices. And if it isn't, that means you got it wrong and um, try again. <laughs> um, but also, um, if you're taking a test and you do not see your answer choice, um, th then that means you should either retry the problem or if that problem has taken a significant amount of time for you already, just move on because- um, The answer choices are never wrong. So make, your, make sure you read the question right or you didn't leave anything out or check your calculations. Right. And um, it's always good to use like an extra sheet of paper to do your work because um, whenever you're taking any um, a competitive math test or math exam because it's very easy to um, like have to cram your work into a little space and then like mess up um, if you're just is very frustrating because the test itself I know it may small it may sound weird but the paper is very small like right. the paper they give for the test is like very it's like half the size of regular paper so you will not have a lot of space it's like just... a it's like a brochure or a booklet so right. you need to be uh Okay, careful. Right, and um, yeah, so it would be best if you used an extra sheet of paper. You can ask for an extra sheet of paper um, on any of the um, tests, I think. Um, I'm not sure if um, for math counts you can do that. Um, I don't remember being able to um, use you it. You can, you can. Okay, yeah, so for math counts and AMC, you will be able to use an extra sheet of paper, so use that to your advantage. Um, it just can't be graphing paper. Um, it so don't bring sure, graph paper. Yeah, don't otherwise you will get in trouble um, and be disqualified. Okay, so I have seen two right answers. So the answer is C, um, and that is because, um, so first we should find the prime factorization of 180 and 594, right? And that's two to the power of two times three squared times five. Um, for 180, and then for 594, it's 2 times 3 to the power of 3 times 11. And that means that the GCF of these numbers is 18, and the LCM is 5940. So, oh god. Well, okay. Close tabs, sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, so that means that um, the um, LCM. Uh, that the answer to this question would be 330 um, because you do 5940 divided by 18, meaning the answer is C. Um, and yeah, then this is our last problem before we have our break. Um, so. All right, so the least common multiple of A and B is 12, and the least common multiple of B and C is 15. What is the least common possible value of the least common multiple of A and C? That was enough. So. Yeah. So um, when you're doing these problems, make sure you know um, what exactly you're solving for. Again, um, it's very easy to uh, make a mistake by not knowing what you're solving for and then solving for the wrong thing and then like wasting your time. They so. will give you questions that are weird to read right. or mouthfuls. So. And remember that it's asking for the least possible value um so yeah it's gonna be the least possible value so do not find a greater value and remember that it's between three numbers 
so that technically um, A and B and B and C can share a factor, but that doesn't mean A and C share a factor. Okay, I'm sorry, they're answer choices. So, um, yeah. Okay, so a lot of people are saying A, and it is A. Um, okay, so the um, so B has to divide both 15 and 12, meaning um, that B could at the least um, be 3. Um, now, we can set A to 4 and C to 5. Right, and that would mean that they fit the question's criteria, and that would mean that they'd um, be 20. So um, if you ever get an answer and it's asking for the least common or least possible value, and you get the least of the answer choices um, as your answer, and like you know your work is right, that probably means you're correct because um, there's no lesser value, um, which is shown. So if that fits the criteria and it's least value, or conversely, if it's asking for the greatest value and you found the greatest value, it's probably correct. So, yeah. Okay, so that means the LCM is 20. Okay, okay so we're going to be having a five minute break. So, um, you can like use the restroom, take, uh, like have a snack, something like that. Um, and yeah. Okay, you can. Uh, we can open it up in a gym board if you have any questions. Okay, so there are 15 answers. Okay, so most of you got the right answer, which was Friday. Um, so if you, okay, so um, even if you did not know GCM and LCF, um, you should have been able to use logic um, to say, if I play the drum every seven days, that means I play it every day like the same day every week right um and if i played it on friday that means i will always play the drums on friday and that would mean that the next time that i play both again would also be a friday um so you could use logic but also when you find the um lcm it would be 14 so in two weeks after last friday so it would be this friday or next friday that you would play both again Okay, so question two, um, GCF of X and Y, um, find, uh, GCF XY rep represents GCF of X and Y, find the GCF of the GCF of 128 and 148, and the GCF of 32 and 24. So, um, you will- Be careful that you don't make a silly mistake. <laughs> right. Because it's very easy for this question. Right, make sure that you use your, um, use a paper and a pencil. Um, it's if you're just doing mental math, you're going to make a mistake, and it's pointless to just be doing mental math. Unless you find it a lot and you're fast at it. Right. If it's something like find a times b or something, and like it's like ten and twenty, you won't need paper and pencil to solve that. You can use mental math. But if it's something where you know you're you're not um, very used to doing it. Um, then it's very easy to make a mistake. And even if you're used to doing it, just use paper and pencil, because even if you um, do not, you know, even if you um, do know it well, you can still make a mistake. That can cost you a lot. And um, when you make lots of mistakes, they will compound and lower your score overall. Um, and yeah. Okay, so there are 11 answers and there are five seconds left. So get your answer in quick. Um, okay, so um, four, um, no, 15 people answered um, and the answer was eight. So um, the GCF of 128 and 48. So 128 would be um, four multiplied by um, 32, uh, right? So it would be two to the power of um, seven, right? And then 48 would be, um, th th the greatest common factor of both of those would be two to the power of um, four, right? And then the GCF of um, 32 and 24 would be um, eight, 
right? So then eight, um, the greatest common factor of eight and two to the power of four or 16 would be eight. So um, yeah, that's how you would solve that. Does anyone have any questions? If not, then, okay. So 72 girls and 80 boys are arranged in equal rows of the same gender. What can be the greatest of greatest number of kids per row? So by equal rows, it means that there are an equal number of people per row. Um, so as I said earlier, um, figure out what you're solving and how you will solve it. Like how, um, what you will use to solve for. Um, like don't just say like math, like, you know, think in your head, well, I use LCM, well, I use GCF. Um, well, I use a combination of these, you know. Um, so there are nine answers or 11 answers now um, and 20 seconds left. So um, yeah, make sure you get your answers in. Um, okay. And it's okay if you do know how to solve these problems, but you just don't have enough time to solve them. So long as you know what you're solving, um, like how you're solving it, um, you will always have time to improve the amount of time. Um, you take. So the answer was eight. Um, so it's just asking for the greatest common factor of 72 and 80. Um, and the greatest common factor would be two to the power of three or eight. Um, so yeah. Okay, so what's the GCF of 66 and 188? Um, also, these questions are in random order. So some of them may be easier than others and some of them may be harder than others oh okay um that's okay if you have connection issues right now um so long as um you're able you you know how to solve each problem or you have an idea of how to solve each problem um uh and yeah you can watch this recording later also um and the cahoots are linked to the slides, so you will also be able to access those. So yeah. Okay, so 12 answers, um, 13 answers. So um, the answer is two. Um, so 66 is 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 11, and 188 is um, 2 squared multiplied by, um, is 2 squared multiplied by um, 47, and the greatest common factor of those would be 2. Okay, find the largest integer under 100 that is divisible by the first three non-zero even numbers. Okay, so um, first figure out what the first three non-zero even numbers are. Then figure out um, what you're gonna be doing with those numbers. And then figure what out- What does non-zero even numbers mean? Um, so non-zero would mean it's not zero, and then even numbers, um, even numbers, you know. Um, so it would be the first three positive non-zero even numbers. So yeah. Okay, so um, I think there are only 14 people in this right now, so I shall skip or 15 people. So. Okay, okay. Um, so 
the largest integer under 100 that is divisible by the first three non-zero even numbers. So the first three non-zero even numbers would be 2, 4, and 6, right? Um, so now we find the least common multiple of 2, 4, and 6, right? And that would be 12. And then um, you would, um, and then find the greatest multiple of 12 that is less than 100. 12 multiplied by 8 is 96. So that would mean that you are, um, that the answer is 96. Okay. So, a light blinks every seven seconds. Um, yeah, sorry. Another light blinks every nine seconds. Both just blinked. When will they blink together next? So yeah, if you read the question incorrectly, that's okay. Um, make sure that um, so some good tips are underline the important parts of the question. Underline what it's asking for and underline the important information and then um, that helps reduce the amount of errors you make. Um, but a lot of the times you might forget to underline or do something like that, or it might be time consuming for you. So um, yeah, um, just do whatever works for you to help you um, not misread the question. Um, so the answer is 63 seconds from now. Um, so nine times seven is 63. And the reason we do nine times seven is because the um, greatest common factor of both of them is one, so you just multiply them together. Um, so they'll um, blank seven times nine, or 63 seconds from now. Okay. Jane flipped a ran to a random page in the book. The page number was divisible by 24 and six. What is the pro smallest possible page number? And um, as stated on the slides, the least um, common multiple of two numbers can be one of the numbers, um, and yeah. Um, but it, um, yeah, um, it can be one of the numbers, but it doesn't have to be, um, as shown by previous examples. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so the answer is 24. Um, I think I might have given away the answer about what I said, but yeah, um, uh, someone said 48. Um, again, remember the least common multiple um, of two numbers can always be one of the numbers. And um, yeah, same goes with the GCF. The number of people at a pool is divisible by 12 and four. What is the smallest number of people there? Um, also, um, tomorrow we will be doing um, like the um, we will be doing some AMC problems, like more AMC problems, um, in relation to the topics learned today and. Um, the topics that we will learn tomorrow. So yeah. Um, so the answer is 12. Um, 12 is um, so 12 and 4. Their greatest, um, com their least common multiple is 12. So the answer would be 12. Okay. What is the LCM of 32 and 18? So um, also, um, just as a tip, whenever you're taking an exam like AMC 8 or a math counts exam or something like that, um, check your answers. It is very easy to like miss a bubble or accidentally like not write the correct number or your number looks very, like it could be something else. Like you could write your ones so they look like sevens or your sevens so they look like ones and that can cost you a point. Um, yeah, that happened to me once. Like I bubbled the wrong answer and I got like, it was out of 25, right? And I got one through 24, right? But I missed bubble to number two. So uh, yeah. of all the questions, number two is one of the easiest ones and I missed bubble. So 
Right. And also um, remember, um, just um, so when you're taking the AMC um, or any of the AMCs, it's going to go from increase from least difficulty to greatest difficulty. So if you have a problem with one of the earlier questions, um, like it might be harder to solve the next one, but it um, recent no recently what they've been doing like they've been switching it up just to throw people off. Like right. in the past AMC ten, they made the hardest questions um, in the fifteen through twenty range, which to mess up people's timing. Right. Right. So. Okay. So okay. So the question was the LCM of thirty two and eighteen. So eighteen is two times nine. Um, uh, two times three squared, and then 32 is two to the power of five. So then it would be two to the power of five times nine, which would be 288. Okay, so Manith is still first. Um, so which is the definition of LCM? So make sure that um, you aren't mixing stuff up. You aren't mixing up LCM and GCF. I know that a lot of the times, like I mix up LCM and GCF because they're both just acronyms. But like, if you ever are like, what am I doing? Like, is it LCM or GCF? Just say out what it stands for, least common multiple or greatest common factor. And then that helps. Um, so yeah. Um, also um, about the practicing thing. Um, you should practice exams like previous exams to help you. Um, so yeah, LCM is the smallest integer divisible by all the given numbers. Um, and so some of you mixed it up with um, GCF. LCM is the multiple, right? It's what um, the numbers multiply to. Um, so um, you said the prime, so someone said the prime factors that multiply to become a number. That's the prime factorization. Um, and then divisors that it divide a number, that's the factors in general, not the um, LCM. So yeah. Um, so you should practice previous tests and previous tests can be found on AOPS. Um, so just search AOPS AMC8 and you should be able to find um, exams. So LCM of ENF represents the common multiple of ENF. Um, find the LCM of um, six, find the LCM of the LCM of 6 and 14 and um, the LCM of 12 and 18. Yeah, so in the chat, um, Rishab typed um, the link to the previous AMC 8 problems and solutions. Um, so yeah, so take them after the course, take them after you actually like learn topics, and um, if you have learned a significant amount of topics, um, then you should be able to take the um, like the problems, the test, the practice test um, now um, or soon, right? Um, but also, um, even if you do not know a significant amount of um, certain problems or, or, or of content, you should still be able to solve like the first 10 um, problems. Um, and some of them may take um, more time than others, but you still should be able to solve the first few. Um, so yeah, um, and some of you I know are in fourth or fifth grade, so um, you will not be taking the AMC eight this year. Um, you you might be taking it next year. But you can. I mean, if you ask the. Uh, you can't take it through your school though. No, not through school. You have to ask like RSM or something. Right. You have to ask like other. Um, uh, like outside of school things. It's in February, so. Right. Okay. So the LCM of six and fourteen is forty-two, um, and then the LCM of twelve and eighteen is um, uh, uh, one hundred eight, right? Um, no, no, no. Sorry, it's thirty-six. Um, so thirty-six and forty-two. The LCM of that is two hundred fifty-two, and um, yeah, that should have been your answer. So. If you want to have more information about the uh, AMC date or when it's offered or, you know, uh, number of questions and stuff, you can ask it or you can like email one of us or you can just look it up too. Yeah. True or false. If two numbers have a GCF of one, then the LCM of the two numbers is their product. So you can figure this out if you use like the um, equation we had 
shown you in um, the slides. Um, or you could use it, um, figure this out by using logic. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so make sure you get your answers in. Um, so the answer is true. So the LCM times the GCF is the product of two numbers, right? Um, the LCM of two numbers times the GCF of two numbers is the product. If the GCF is one, then that's just going to be the LCM of two numbers, um, right, is their product. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so find the grade GCF of 288 and 264. And um, remember, uh, like, what you're finding, not LCM, but GCF, yeah. Also, class ends in nine minutes. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so class ends in nine minutes. So, um, we will be ending this in five minutes. So, we could just go over the homework and, um, yeah, just show you where the homework is. And, um, yeah. Okay, so find the prime factorization of the numbers and then find the GCF. Um, okay, so 15 of you have answered. There are 20 seconds left, so I think one of you has not yet answered, um, so get your answer in. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so the answer is 24. So you can see that these are multiples of eight if you know your divisibility rules, since um, 288 would be divisible by eight, and then 264 would also be divisible by eight. Um, and you know this because 200 is divisible by eight, and then the last two numbers are also divisible by eight. So 88 and 64 are divisible by eight. So that means that the numbers themselves are divisible by eight. And then when you add up the digits, you get um, 18 for the first one and 12 for the second one, meaning both of them are multiples of three. So three times eight is 24. Um, so Sean golfs every sixth day and Brad golfs every seventh day. Brad, both of them went golfing today. When will they golf on the same day again? So remember um, what you're solving for and what you're going to do to solve it. And if you have any questions about AMC, you can just stick after class and like ask them um, and I'll be happy to answer. So 15 of you have answered. Um, that means one more person has to answer. Um, okay, so in 42 days. So the greatest, um, sorry, the least common multiple of six and seven is 42 um, because their um, the, their least common, their greatest common factor is one. So um, that means the answer is 42. So, okay. Um, so evaluate the LCM of 4 and 7 divided by the um, GCF of 32 and 100. So um, use pencil and paper, as said earlier. Um, and yeah, you should be able to solve this. Although you may not be able to say solve it in the time given. Um, And if you want to access these questions later, um, the um, cahoots are linked in the um, presentation, so you can look at them. And also, um, uh, these um, the presentation will be posted um, after tomorrow's class, so you will not be able to access it today. Um, but yeah. Okay, six seconds. Get your answers in. Okay, so the least common multiple of four and seven is 28. And then the greatest common factor 
of 32 and 100 is 4, because 32 is 2 to the power of 5, and 100 is 2 squared times 5 squared, right? So the greatest common factor of that is 2 squared or 4. And then uh, the then 28 divided by 4 is equal to 7, so that means that this is 7. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, 12 in tall boxes are stacked next, uh, sorry, 12 inches, um, boxes of 12 inches height are stacked next to, next to boxes of 18 inches height. Find the shortest height where both stacks are the same um, height. Um, so it's asking for the um, smallest amount of boxes where both stacks, or sorry, the smallest amount of height, which is divisible by, bo by both 12 and 18 inches, basically. Again, it's very easy to make mistakes, so make sure that you are um, um, so make sure that you are sure of your answer and sure of what you're clicking or bubbling or whatever. So yeah. Okay, so 15 people have answered. There are eight seconds left, five seconds left. Um, so get in your answers. Um, okay, so the answer is 36 because um, 12, um, the greatest, uh, the least common multiple of 12 and 18 is 36. Um, so yeah, I will be ending um, this Kahoot. Um, so I could just um, go over the homework quickly. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So Manasvi, Shreya, and um, Manan. So. Um, Okay, so congratulations to all of you. Um, so I have to go over the homework quickly. Um, so um, it is linked in the presentation itself. Um, so I'll put the link in the chat. Um, let me just, okay. Okay, so um, let me, sorry. Okay, so this homework will be put into the um, Google Classroom, and it will also be um, in the chat right now. Um, so you should finish the problems before class. Um, and yeah. What? What? Could you please say that again? Um, sorry. Um, so the question um, is, so, sorry, the, not the question. The homework is in the chat. Um, you can access it and print it. Um, and yeah, you should be able to print it um, and then solve it. Or if you do not want to print it, you can, um, uh, you can. Um, we need to Okay, wait, sorry. Yeah, we need access for it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, but also it will be posted in the Google Classroom in case um, you have to go right now. Um, okay, so you should be able to access it right now. Um, so bye. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stay. Um, have a good day. Um, class is also at the same time tomorrow. Um, and yeah, thank you for attending.